today we'll start our third day of parametric equations and we're going to focus on parametric applications today. Um, the objective that we'll be talking about is solving projectile motion problems using parametric equations. I love to use the top golf example because it's the perfect example of measuring three separate variables. If you've ever been to top golf, they'll put you in one of these little bays and usually they put me in the second or third row. So I've got some kind of initial height. I'm off the ground a certain distance. And then it's kind of like a combination between darts and um, bowling, so to speak. But you're trying to get your golf ball, the driving range, to get to the center of the bullseyes that are out in the range. So you hit your golf ball, and if you're any good at golf, it's going to have some kind of peak, some kind of arc, and then it'll eventually fall. And so there's three different variables we can measure. We can measure the horizontal distance. We can also measure the height, and then we can measure the time at any instance that the ball will be traveling. So here's what the equation looks like um, for our dolphin example that we've seen before as well. So these questions are all related to the three different variables that we see. When you're asked something how far horizontally does it travel, that's refer referring to our x variable, the horizontal distance. When you are asked how far vertically does it travel after three seconds, that's going to be relating to our y variable, the height. When it's asking for what is the maximum height of the dolphin, well, we can kind of see that from the graph that it's going to be here. But again, it's asking for our y variable, maximum height. And then how long is the dolphin in the air? Well, they want to know how long that dolphin is going to be out of the water. And how long is referring to time. So there's a couple of different types of questions that we'll ask you. Here are the formulas that we use for projectile motion. It looks a little scary, but we break it down quite a bit. It says for an object launched at an angle theta with the horizontal at an initial velocity v sub zero, where g is the gravitational constant, t is time, and h sub zero is the initial height, here are the two equations that we need to represent the entire set of parametric equations. We have a horizontal distance, and a vertical distance, so both an x equals and a y equals equation is what we're looking at today. Then we know that um, with our gravitational constant, 32 would be the gravitational constant for feet, so half of that is 16. The gravitational constant for meters would be 9.8, so half of that is 4.5 meters. More simply put, this is really the equation that you need to know for our class. We don't do too much in meters. We keep things in feet. And so that negative 16 t squared will be the value that is relevant to you. Now what I would like you to do is take out the application of parametric equations worksheet. This is the top golf example. And it reads that Luke hits a golf ball from an initial height of 20 feet at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. The ball has an initial speed of 65 feet per second. So this is the example that we are going to use throughout this entire worksheet. I really like this worksheet because it does a great job of asking a lot of questions um, that could be asked of you for your parametric application objective. So first of all, I'm just going to mark up this particular graph. Here is the initial height. Of 20 feet. Then it says he's hitting the ball at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. So if I were to make a little right angle there, this angle we're seeing is 40 degrees. And then we've got some initial speed built into this as well. You'll notice on your worksheet that it's giving you the modes that this would be viewed in, in your calculator. But we are never going to graph this. I'm going to teach you a different way in what mode you need to be in. But for today's example, you'll get to see what this looks like. So do not graph in parametric mode. You'll learn how to particularly graph this one in a little bit. 
So part one says write a parametric equation for the scenario. So we are going to write a parametric equation using the formula that we learned on the previous slide. So what we're going to start with is our x and y equals equations. The x is telling you the distance the golf ball travels, or in other words, in this visual, that would be the x equals equation. And we're going to start with t, our parameter. t is multiplied by the initial velocity, and in this case our initial speed is 65 feet per second. Then we're going to multiply this by cosine of the direction angle. And our direction angle in this case, that's the angle to the horizontal, that's 40 degrees. So there's our x equals equation. And we also have a y equals equation, and that's telling us the height of this particular golf ball at any given point in time. And so we're going to also start with t, the initial velocity. We're going to switch this to sine since it's the y equals equation, but we'll still take sine of 40 degrees since that's the direction angle. Minus 16 t squared. Remember, 16 is that gravitational value we used. It's one half of the gravitational constant, plus our initial height, which is 20 feet. So we're going to look at a few questions based on the, this equation. So question two says, what is the initial horizontal and vertical velocity? Make a note to yourself that here is where we're finding the initial horizontal and vertical velocity. This will be important for you. And when we're calculating the initial horizontal and vertical velocity, essentially what we're doing is just kind of finding um, the information that we need, and it relates a lot to vectors. So for our x equals, our horizontal, so what we're going to do is take that value x for horizontal and set it equal to 65 cosine of 40 degrees. We'll also do the same thing for the initial vertical velocity. We'll take the y value and set that equal to 65 sine of the initial velocity. And then we'll plug these in our calculator. So I just want to highlight in the formula where those are. That would just be this value here. And this value right here is the initial horizontal and vertical velocity. Um, another thing that you want to make sure of one more time is that your calculator is in degree mode when you're evaluating these. You would hate to answer all these questions in the wrong mode, especially for testing purposes. Um, so I'll just go ahead right over to my calculator and type this in, 65 cosine of 40 degrees, as well as 65 sine of 40 degrees. I get 49.8 is what that will round to. And I also get 41.8. Our units in this particular case, since we're talking about initial horizontal and vertical velocity, we would have this be in feet per second. Next, we're going to talk about the position of the ball after one second. So we're going to take that carryover from the equation um, that we have in number one, and we are going to say that x is equivalent to, instead of just time, we're going to plug one in for the time, 65 cosine of 40 degrees. We'll also evaluate the y or the height equation for the parametric at 65 sine 40 minus 16 times 1 squared plus 20. So it's the whole thing for that y equals equation this time. Um, coincidentally for our position after the ball of the ball after one second, um, that is going to be equivalent to what we previously had, so 49.8. But I will need to recalculate for the second one. So 1 multiplied by 65 sine 40. And then from that, I'm going to subtract 16 multiplied by 1 squared. And then adding another 20 to that value. So we get 45.8. OK, 
Okay, we'll do the same thing now, but the position of the ball after two and a half seconds. So when we're typing this in, we've got y equals two and a half is what we're substituting in for time instead of one, very similar to that previous equation. Two and a half in for time again, minus 40, minus 16, multiplied by two and a half squared plus 20. So let's see what this ends up being, two and a half, 65 cosine 40, and then we also have two and a half, 65 sine 40, minus 16 times two and a half squared plus 20. So we get a horizontal distance of 124.5 feet. We also get a vertical distance of 24.5 feet. That's what these will round to.